Gentlemen, ladies, welcome to your 20th HTML5 tutorial. And in this lesson, actually in the next couple lessons, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about CSS3. Now, I know we talked a little bit about it before, but there's actually a ton of crap we need to cover concerning CSS3. And actually, HTML5 and CSS3 are like married together, kind of like XHTML and CSS were. So this tutorial series could have even be called HTML5 and CSS3 because that's how connected they are you can't really use one without the other and if you do it's not gonna work out too well so enough of me talking let me go ahead and explain I first ripped everything out of our body because or excuse me my website because we only really need something simple for this demonstration so make sure you have a div which is gonna you know just surround your entire website and just like a paragraph or any text inside if you have text surround it with a, a span but just go ahead and copy this throw in your website and we'll be good I didn't want to go ahead and retype this because all you guys know what this stuff is already I also have uh, you know my body centered and I gave that div a background and a border so I also changed the text but none of this really matters as long as you have this set up you can make it look like anything you want so basically I am working with this website right like this nothing new so anyways let's get to the meat of the tutorial now that you know how my template is set up so the very first thing I want to talk to you guys is about giving rounded corners to your div or to any box really. Now as you can see these boxes have nice square corners and with a lot of websites nowadays that's what they want but for some reason people tend to prefer round corners so let me go ahead and show you guys. You see this window right here? Ooh, look at that my arrow changes that's pretty cool. I don't know, I was just fascinated by that. Oh, look, an arrow. But anyways, you see how these corners are rounded? Wouldn't it be nice if we can achieve the same effect of this on our website? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come where you can actually do that. So before the old CSS, or excuse me, yeah, the old CSS, it was very difficult to achieve this. But for now, using CSS3, it's actually incredibly simple, almost too easy if you ask me. So what you need to do is throw your WebKit in there and the property is border minus radius. Now what you need to do is you need to give it a value say uh, 25. The higher the value the more rounded they're going to be. So if you round these 25 pixels and save this take a look whenever I refresh in my corners. I now have nice sweet rounded corners. So basically as soon as this becomes a standard I got a feeling you guys are going to be seeing a ton more rounded websites because I don't know it just looks like more futuristic rather than this old square crap so you're saying okay that's pretty nice okay CSS3 can round my corners not that impressed well wouldn't it be nice if this box right here if we could make it look just a tidbit prettier so how can we do that let's go ahead and apply a shadow and I know what you guys are saying OMG I was in college like three years ago and they told me to apply shadows and it was the biggest pain in the butt it was this whole process yada 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 well with CSS3 it is a thousand times more simple than it was in the past couple years so the property for this is webkit and its box shadow now the properties or excuse me the values kinda get kinda weird here so you need to listen closely the very first thing it's going to take is a color RGB and this is the red green and blue value now just say it's anywhere from 0 to 255 and I'm gonna put mine at like 110 110 110 the higher you go the more white it's gonna be the lower you go the darker it's gonna be if they're all the same it's a shade of gray so that's somewhere it's kind of like a dark gray and it takes at least two values after this now the first value it takes is the offset to left and right so I'm gonna go ahead and put it 8 pixels and that's gonna shift the shadow 8 pixels to the right because if we put it directly under our box our box is gonna be covering up so we have it shift directly to the right 8 pixels and directly down 8 pixels so let me go ahead and show you guys that not 88 don't want to do that and save this baby and we'll see what we got and it didn't save because RGB 10 10 10 okay box shadow oh what the heck web skit 
What the heck is a web skit? That's embarrassing. Now if we save it, refresh this beast, and you see we got a nice dark gray shadow to the right and down 8 pixels. Looks awesome, doesn't it? Uh, not exactly, because when the heck have you ever seen a shadow that looks like that in a coloring book, maybe? Shadows have some kind of blur to them. They have, like, a gradient that kind of fades out. So, in order to add this blur, we need one additional value. So, this is the offset to the right. This is the offset to the left. And, by the way, if you have a negative number like this, then it's going to shift it to the left instead of the right. It's just right and down is the standard. But, anyways... If we have one more value, let's say 8 pixels, this third pixel value is the amount of blur. In other words, the amount of gradient that it's going to fade out. So now if we go ahead and save this in refresh, take a look at my gradient right here. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to blast all these up so it's really easy to see on YouTube. 10, 10, 10, save this biatch and refresh and check it out. We now have a nice gradient blur fading out of our shadow. So how awesome is that? It's now looking like a realistic shadow. And oh man, I probably don't got time to talk to you guys about text shadows and gradients, but what I do have time to talk to you guys about is this last property that you can add to a shadow. So I'll just I'll just do that. So as you can see, the shadow kind of looks like this box is casting a shadow on the background of our website. However, there is a way that we can make the shadow on the inside of our box. Now we can add an additional property to this and you're saying, okay, we have three colors and three pixels and now you want me to add more stuff? Yes. You have an optional word you can add called inset. Not incest, inset. Now whenever you add this word, what it means is, okay, instead of the shadow being on the outside of the box, it's going to look like something is casting the shadow on the box. So it gives you that effect of kind of, you know, a button pressed in or something, and all of the same other properties apply. Um, you know, your blur, your color, all that same stuff. So this is how, I don't know, maybe you want to make a box and make it look like it's a button pressed in. I don't use it that often because I don't like the way it looks. But uh, if you want to use that, it's called inset and you add it right to the end. And I believe that's the only additional word that you can use. So anyways, in the next tutorial, I got to talk to you guys about text shadows, which are a little bit different. And also how you can make gradients. For example, make this fade from blue to red. And if you think you know how to do it from the old CSS, we got a totally new better way of doing it. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.